Welcome. My name is Steven DiPianco. Uh, I'm the CEO of a company called Metaverse Marcom. We help uh, brands activate on Roblox um, across UGC, helping them with strategy, integrations, uh, marketing, etc. cetera. Uh, excited to have this conversation with uh, Marcus from The Gang and Zach from Super League Gaming. Um, we're going to sort of dive deep into um, into Roblox and and understand how brands are leveraging the platform for growth. And um, but before we dive in, as people come in, I've created a few sort of poll questions um, to give us uh, a chance to better understand who's out there watching, um, to be able to sort of tailor the conversation um, based on based on your needs. So let me launch that now. All right, so there's a few questions in here um, about location, about familiarity with Roblox, whether you have a Roblox account or not, uh, what industries you're, you might be in. So people are starting to fill that out. That's great. We'll give this uh, just probably another sort of 30 seconds. We won't catch everybody, but if you're just joining us, be sure to check out this poll. Um, so early results were so far, we have about 59%, um, 60% have completed the poll thus far. So we're getting some good data here. This is something that, uh, I'm a big fan of getting data back to help us dictate our strategy. All right. 75% completed. So let me just give it a, a few more seconds to let people, uh, fill out these, their answers to these questions. All right, we're just about 80%. So we'll give it a couple more seconds for people to do that. Then I'll wrap this up. And then we'll go on to introductions and start the, the, the webinar itself properly. Okay, let me, we have 82%. We have 43, 80, over 80%. Uh, all right, so let me end the poll now and, uh, and then share the results. All right, so where are you located? All right, so 70% North America, 20% Europe, uh, just under 10% other. So primarily North American audience, great. How familiar, familiar are you with Roblox? So 25% beginner, 43% uh, intermediate, 32% advanced. So a really pretty broad cross section. So I think we'll you know, wanna both touch on sort of for the newbie, for the sort of novice, you know, kind of be able to speak in those terms, but also uh, dive deeper, go into some, into the weeds, into some more advanced level topics as well to kind of cover that full spectrum. Um, do you have your own Roblox user account? 70%? Yes. So that's great. Um, people are, are actually getting in there. Uh, what industry are you in? So 32% uh, entertainment, 2% sports, 16% gaming, no retail, no fashion, no beauty, 36% advertising, 14% other. Okay, all right, so there we go. So that's our, um, that's our makeup. And then just invite, um, I want to invite all sort of, you know, participants, you know, who are watching, uh, please feel free to, um, you know, leave questions and comments um, in, the, in the chat. Um, we'll make sure to get to those as possible. I believe there's also like a Q&A um, function uh, enabled within within here. Um, I don't know exactly how that works, but I did enable it. So if you can figure that out and I think you can upvote uh, questions as well and, and stuff like that. So hopefully as we go on, I'll, I'll figure that as well. But um, all right. So without further ado, we'll, we'll dive into this conversation. We'll do about 25, 30 minutes of sort of me asking some questions, guiding the conversation to you gentlemen. Um, and then we'll save some time, 10, 15 minutes at the end in order to open it up to, um, to Q&A from, from the audience. All right, cool. So let's go. I'm gonna throw it over to Marcus first um, and then to Zach. So the question is, if you can just tell us where you work and what you do there. Excellent. Nice to be here, first of all, and um, I'm super happy that so many people are joining. And um, I am uh, currently located in uh, Lisbon, in Portugal, which I moved to for about almost a year ago. I'm from Sweden originally, 
and then we have people within the company. Uh, the company is called the Gang or the Gang Group, and uh, we have three locations or main locations. We have people in other locations as well, but three main locations where we have companies, and that is Portugal, Sweden, and UK. And um, we are growing on an all three places. So the company now is um, counting everyone that have signed but may not have started. Uh, it's around 150 people. Uh, um, and yeah, and I think by the end of the year, we're going to be somewhere between 200 to 250 people. Wow. Uh, so it's it's been quite an significant growth since we were um yeah we, we've been uh, last year we tripled this year we're gonna um uh, at least double in size and we have been doing it which i'm very very proud of we have been doing it organically uh, so we haven't been doing it by taking in tons of cash and growing so we we've been doing it the old-fashioned way <laughs> because i'm an old-fashioned person uh, so um we we've been growing with our own revenues steady and i would almost say slowly but we haven't been growing slowly <laughs> that's great but yeah congratulations on on all that growth all that success i mean the sort of the question is what do you do there i imagine then it seems like hiring is a big part of your job these days uh, it's it's been shifting quite a lot when we okay. started we were uh, we were five founders in the company. So everyone is coming from the gaming industry, apart from me. So I'm coming from uh, marketing, finance side. I've been starting up companies. That's been my life. So I, um, I've been starting and selling a few companies by now. <laughs> and um, that's how I came into gaming as well. I invested in a, in a gaming company in Sweden. And then uh, we sold that one. And then the the founder and the CEO of the company, he wanted to do something uh, else after a while. And then he contacted me and asked if I'm up for doing something again, something real. And then um, we looked into starting this company. And then we gathered people we trusted, really liked working with. And the idea was not to build a big company. I told Zach this before as well. The idea was actually to have something to do. We um, that was you have something plan. to do <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but to have like um to have something fun to do with people we like we no plan at all to big uh, build a big company or or focus on that so we we were five guys and we wanted to build some fun games and we came into roblox by coincidence 2019 and then we saw the opportunity and then we said let's focus on roblox and then um it's been going quite well and i can talk more about that but i want to hear about zach first yeah let's throw it over to zach thanks thanks marcus thanks marcus thanks steve uh zach Khan, i head up partnerships for super league gaming um been here about a year and a half when i entered the space i knew very little about roblox as of today i feel like i spend more time in roblox than i do in the real world so I'm very excited to talk about this. We just actually finished doing Playfronts where we talked a lot about our offerings and what we can do with brands in the Roblox space, among other spaces in the metaverse, but Roblox just being such a massive opportunity right now. Um, so I've had the joy of working with Steve on a couple of things, Marcus on a few things and his team, and really excited to share some of the things we've learned and some of the ways we look at the space with everyone here. Cool. All right, Zach, we'll stick with you. And so you know the title of this webinar is uh is is you know how brands can leverage roblox for growth uh so want to talk you know ask you about how super league helps uh brands leverage roblox for growth um and i've got some slides that i can pull up whenever you're ready yeah um i think a good one to pull up would be the one that has the boxes across the top and the left to right um, so Super League acquired a company about two years ago. Um, the company was at that point named BlocksBiz. It has been since renamed to SuperBiz. Uh, the idea behind it was it was the first ad network and analytics tool built specifically for the metaverse and realistically built more specifically for Roblox. 
Um, that allows us to do a lot of things on the platform. This includes dynamically inserting ads for display, video, or 3D characters, um, working with our partners, uh, our game partners, to do digital branded goods and distribute those goods into a bunch of different games, integrate into people's experiences, or working with partners like the gang, building experiences from the ground up. And then we can help drive traffic to anything we're doing on the platform through uh, portals with billboards that players walk through and just walk into your game and amplify through content and content creators. So kind of like to think of ourselves as almost a publishing partner. So if you think of somebody like the gang as a development partner, we can help you then find audience, drive audience, think about how we're going to monetize the game, analyze the game and measure it. Very cool. Yeah, lots of lots of different ways um, to be able to enter the platform. Um, and I, and I, I like how on sort of this slide here, um, and you guys are able to see that. Okay. The slide. Um, yeah. On the left sort of turnkey and right there's sort of, uh, it's, it's easier on the left, right? It's like not as much of a lift, maybe not as expensive, uh, maybe not as costly in terms of sort of timeline and, you know, um, you know, how long it takes to, to get off the ground. Um, and so going from like, oh, simple display all the way up into a full custom experience um, runs the gamut in terms of that complexity and, and sort of level of commitment required. Yeah, it's, I mean, we really want to give brands an opportunity to crawl, to walk, to run, and then to sprint within the space. Um, there are a lot of really shiny objects on, you know, press and PR that talk about who's built and what they've built, but there are a lot of ways to find and engage this audience that can be really good for a brand that don't take time or massive amounts of money in the beginning. And you can learn from that to build the best experience. And I think one of the things that I really like about some of the things we offer in terms of leading up to what you might do with somebody like the gang is you can learn and there's this audience will share with you. They will tell you what they like, what they don't like. They are vocal and use those learnings to build the best experience possible when you're ready to make that big jump. Um, the one thing that you'll notice here though, is that pricing is not listed. Just because it's turnkey or, or an integrated experience doesn't mean it's not expensive. There are a lot of ways where these things do get expensive in terms of integrating into some of these bigger games. You know, you talk about the Adopt-Me's and Livetopia's of the world. It is not cheap, but you're, you're basically earning their audience. So there are deeper levels of engagement that you're getting with a built-in audience versus building something on your own and driving audience. And so we didn't put pricing on here because this is not really driven by pricing. It really is about the time spent and the engagement needed, or sorry, the time needed and the engagement that you get back out of some of these different things that you could be doing. Yeah, and there's a question here from the audience. Um, Zach, have you had any clients that jump all the way in you know, right away. Yes. Not only do we have them, there, there have been a couple where we've said, no, 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 start down here. We want you to start here. Let's learn and build to this. And they've said, no, we're ready. Let's go. We're building. So yes, there are people that this is what they want. And they already know that as long as we can help give them the knowledge that they need to do that right, which is, it's not a short-term kind of investment. This is a long term you are becoming a game publisher and you need to think about the programming you're going to build similar to how you think about social media where every day you're looking at the feedback the players are giving you and you're you're turning and changing what you're doing in real time based off of that if you think about it the right way we're all in but you just need to know what you're getting yourself into gotcha um all right thanks zach um so, so Marcus, over to you, um, you know, the question just to, to recap is, you know, what are the ways that your company is helping brands uh, leverage Roblox for growth? And I, I do have some slides over here that I can. Share. Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, we can. We can wait for the slides a little okay, bit. Okay, let me. Then, yeah, uh, hang on one second. Yeah, yeah. no, it's cool. I like talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we continue on that. No, I, uh, we do everything from uh, helping brands create strategies um, to discuss with the brands the reason why they should enter Roblox, why they should be there, what they can do, the opportunity for them, uh, to actual building, to um, 
putting in motion, uh, sitting together with their team, looking into this is what they want to achieve, and then we create it for them. And that we do internally with um, every discipline that we have, everything from, of course, project management to uh, coders to uh, game design to artists, etc. Um, and then we also evaluate, we do updates, live ops. And initially when we started, I actually thought that the first clients when we came in, I thought that we would build this once and then <laughs> we would leave it. And then we go to uh, maybe next client. But um, first of all, which is, which is nice, obviously, they seem to like us. <laughs> so uh, they continue to work with us. But and also, we, we work very, very closely with them. To uh, just as Zach said, we analyze the results and we look into what's the feedback? What do they actually want? And then we try to be um, reactive based upon the user feedback. And um, we speak a lot with them, both in-game, but also on other channels, on uh, the client channels or on Discord that we set up. So we try to speak a lot with the audience to see what are they expecting? Are the things that we should change, iterate, uh, add, or remove for that matter in the experiences to make it better? So we try to work very, very close with the community to, to reach. And I had a couple of, now you can actually bring it up. Sure. Um, and we, we've been working with quite a wide range of clients. So if you look into SACS there, we, we assist clients with everything from uh, mainly actually two things. I would say, or three things, set the strategies, um, integrating in uh, experiences, but that has mainly been in our own experiences, uh, such as uh, Strongman Simulator, which is one of our games. It's quite popular. It's one of the top 50 most popular. And uh, we, did, uh, we did a Shazam integration there in uh, this started a week ago and um, it's been the game actually uh, roblox Sim or strongman simulator actually popped up to uh, I think top 18 position on the platform in the weekend which is fun <laughs> but it's also very very good for shazam the movie <laughs> because it's literally millions of people um, and then we do full worlds complete worlds uh, persistent worlds. And the first one, big one that we actually did build was Vance World. So I thought this one was interesting to bring up. Um, and what we did here was that we, we built a, a world based upon Vance <laughs> and the brand Vance. So when you come in there, you should, you should feel as you're entering Vance in a joyful way. And you should have the integrations with the brand not plastered on you like a like a banner but more how, how do what do people do when they or what can you do when you think about the brand and this is kind of where we came from and we personally thought that skateboard is um, equivalent to vans we wanted to create a skateboard uh, game the there was some hesitation i can also say uh, initially due to the reason that they are so connected with the skateboard community. So if we didn't pull it off and did a good one, <laughs> it would backfire and become very, very negative. Um, the world I think looks nice still, and you can do a lot of cool things. You can not only skateboard, but you can also acquire items. So you can buy uh, for free money for, for Robux uh, advanced items. And we have had soon 100 million visits to the world, um, it's yeah one of the top branded experiences, and um, so it's it's been going good. And then we did another one recently called Wimbledon last year, and here we wanted to build something that is more kind of a, a competitive focused. <laughs> so we wanted to see if that's possible. So we built um, a replica of the Wimbledon tennis tournament in. Uh, Robux, and uh, 
we we actually had a company tournament also within <laughs> this one ourselves <laughs> within the gang which i probably was the worst in ever <laughs> but um, and what we also did was that we streamed a lot of uh, material from Wimbledon, uh, Wimbledon, the actual Wimbledon, so you can see on the screens in the back. So it's kind of real streaming from Wimbledon. So when you came in there, you could meet celebrities. Um, you could uh, get some uh, items uh, from um, brands that were connected with it and, and of course, play. Also a very, very positive one. Uh, I think this is the second most uh, a positive sports experience or used sport experience uh, after FIFA, which we also did. And I didn't bring that one up. But um, it's, we, and we, we've, been, we've been fortunate to work with a lot of different clients and a variety of clients in various segments. And um, that's more or less what we do. Cool. All right, thank you. Yeah, very interesting to see the, and I'm 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 just um been so impressed with the sort of caliber of of clients that that have worked with the gang, um you know not only Vans and Wimbledon as you mentioned, uh, FIFA, um, Spotify, Gucci, um just uh just just so many of like really uh, high caliber brands, and so yeah, congratulations on. On all you've been able to do with with with, with them. Um, all right. So next question, and thanks for everybody who's been adding questions into the Q and A box. I am seeing those. We're going to hold because uh, some of these are sort of more in depth questions. So we'll hold sort of the Q and A for the most part till the end. But keep um, keep adding questions to the Q and A section, and please. Um, for those of you who don't have a question, though, please like upvote the ones that you're most interested in um, sort of hearing from. Uh, the panelists here. So, um, all right. So moving on, we've talked a little bit about how your companies um, are helping uh, brands leverage Roblox for growth. Um, as mentioned, uh, I, I think Zach, right? Sometimes like a brand has one idea or, you know, Marcus, you're like, oh, there's worries. There's all these concerns about backlash and like doing these the wrong way. This could backfire. So what are some of the sort of challenges um, that, that brands face in terms of succeeding uh, on the platform, Zach, I'll throw it over to you to take that first. Yeah, I think the first thing is um, it's becoming part of the advertising zeitgeist. So as it becomes more popular, there's a lot of good actors out there. Um, the gang is a great one. And there's a lot of people that are just trying to find their way in and make a quick buck and try to you know help brands, but they don't really know what they're doing. So. First thing is make sure you know who you're working with and they have a history of doing things on the platform. One, to keep the brand safe. You know, there's a lot of questions I'm seeing about COPA compliance and the age of who's on Roblox and how your brand comes across. But also you want a good experience that will keep players engaged. Um, time spent is a very important thing. And you see in the Wimble world that there were 17 minutes per player. That's important. And that means a good experience has been created. Brands have a really good opportunity in this space because this audience is open to brands coming in if they're coming in in a way that supports their gameplay and gives them things that they want to see, whether that's brand UGC, which UGC, if those that don't know, are avatar items that you can take from experience to experience. So think of like a branded t-shirt or a branded hat that a player could put on their avatar and wear across experiences. Your brand can really have some some powerful ways to integrate into these games and engage this audience, but you've got to do it in the right way. And that's where work with partners that know what they're doing, that can advise you, that can show you how they've seen success in the past. Um, but it's also a world where it changes every day and new things are happening. So you want somebody that's on the, you know, has their finger on the pulse and the cutting edge and knows what's going on so that they can try new things. So you don't follow in the footsteps of everyone else. Um, I'll stop there. I'll cool. let Marcus jump in because I'm sure he's got things to say, but that's kind of like my first thought on, on the goods cool. and the bads of this. Yeah. Marcus, over to you. Challenges for brands to succeed on the platform. No, but I, I think there are, obviously I have the challenge that you have an 
different way of doing things uh, here compared to what you might be used to doing. And uh, this is a totally different platform, a totally different way of seeing things and entering uh, the platform. And um, it's very, very social. Uh, it's, I think said, uh, Zach said that earlier that it's close to a social media and it definitely is. It's very, very social. Many people come in there to meet their friends, their and now we'll say something that people don't think is stupid, but it's going to kind of meet their actual friends <laughs> and, uh, and not, not the people they meet in, in school. <laughs> but here they're actually going to meet people they care about. <laughs> and um, and what, what the challenge might be for a brand might be that to take this, they are professionals in what they are doing. They are the best of the best in their each vertical. Uh, and they know a lot, but to enter a completely new platform where you might not have a track record to uh, lean back toward, uh, you might not even have anyone to ask because it's completely new, that's going to be scary, uh, obviously. But the challenge is also to take what you knew and be able and dare to uh, try new things and new approaches in order to see, can this actually work on a new platform? And I think that's one of the biggest, also, of course, challenges, but also positive um, potentials that they have at the same time, seeing it's a new audience. Uh, you have virtually hundreds of millions of people here. <laughs> and it's, it's also the, uh, you have the older audience, so you have the customers of today, but the majority of them are going to be customers, with, uh, customers of tomorrow. <laughs> and to kind of see how your products are being received by this audience. <laughs> and you can experiment there and test. And that, I think, is a big, big challenge, of course. And, and also, dare to be social. <laughs> um, dare to open up, speak with them, talk with the community. I think that's also very, very... It's scary a lot, a lot of times because it's like sometimes if you open up too many channels, it's going to be you need to you need to handle it <laughs> and you need to take care of it. But you can get so much out of it. Yeah, I can back. Go ahead. I was just going to say I can back up a couple of really cool pieces of uh, data that we just did for our Playfronts presentation. So. We went into game and asked players some questions and a couple of things that really back up what Marcus said about this being a social platform. Um, when we asked players how they want to engage with their friends, it was 41% answered that they want to engage with them in real life. And it's equally 41% said, I want to hang out with them on platforms like Roblox. And when they're playing the game, they would rather do it in game with their friends two to one over being in person with their friends. Um, the last thing I'll do to kind of back up what, what Marcus was saying was I had a conversation with a friend who worked at big Facebook, Meta, whatever you are supposed to call them today. Um, they did some research of kind of Gen Z, Gen A versus maybe a Gen X or a millennial. And they put them in game and the Gen X and millennial groups went and played the game first and then came back and socialized. The Gen Z, Gen A went in and socialized and then some of them went on to play the game, but it became a social mm. media platform, a place for them to connect and hang out before a game even was a possibility for them. And in some cases, it wasn't a game to them. It was just that social platform. Right. And I think, and I think that there's, I've spoken to a developer of one of the sort of most popular games on the platform. And, and he said, oh yeah, some people just hang out in the lobby. <laughs> they just like just talk to each other and hang out with their friends and they don't actually play the game. And so to kind of go back to what Marcus is saying, um, like, like that's a shift, right? There's like, and what you're saying, Zach, like there's a shift generationally that's happening. And like these younger audiences, let's say Gen Z, Gen A, like they're not necessarily in the workforce. They're not necessarily uh at these brands helping shape this. And so it's up to us who are in these older generations to be able to understand 
the behavior, the shifting user behavior, be able to address it, to be able to serve it. And then I think, Marcus, also what comes to mind as you're talking about, you know, sort of like the fear and scariness, right? I think some brands, some companies, honestly, are just like, they're, they're not used to being innovative. They're not used to being at the forefront. They're not used to taking those risks. Whereas others are very comfortable with that. Like they've spent a lot of time pushing boundaries, being early in their industry. And it's like, those are the companies that are going to succeed because they actually have that in their DNA and the culture um, versus just like chasing that shiny object and like, oh, we should do this. But then we're, we get cold feet at when it doesn't work out right away. I think one of the funniest ones with that, and Marcus, I'll, I'll talk about some of the stuff you guys have done, is fashion to me was somebody that was so hesitant to change. And as digital became bigger and bigger and bigger, fashion stuck with what they knew. Big layouts and magazine spreads on traditional like magazines, paper magazines, versus moving themselves to digital. But when social takeover, fashion moved quick and, and big fashion, like high-end fashion. And they were one of the first, I think, to really make the jump into the space because they saw the social media aspects of it that could happen here. And the fact that this audience and this generation, their digital self is as important, if not more important than their physical self. And so, you know, you talk about the Gucci purse, and I'm sure a lot of people in the, in the audience have heard about the $3,000 Roblox Gucci purse, not the 3,000 Robux Gucci purse, $3,000 Gucci purse, because that is so important to the these these Gen Z and Gen A to show off who they are digitally. And so I just love the the high-end fashion making that jump so quickly because they were the last ones to make the jump to digital in in a weird sense. Yeah, but I, I think on that note, I fully agree with you. But it's also one of the verticals that is easiest to translate into metaverse. Uh, if you look into every single vertical. Uh, we're working with a, a wide range of, um, of verticals. And that one is, just like you say, you already have the avatars. You have your persona. <laughs> and how you look is everything. <laughs> so of course, that's that's very, very simple to translate. And not simple, of course, but it's, it's uh, easy to understand why they are coming in early on compared to some other brands. Uh, if you take a car brand, for example, it's it might be more difficult for them to understand, okay, what is the actual value here and now to do this? There are car brands in the metaverse. I'm not saying that, but but they might have a harder time to understand their position there and their actual value compared to uh, a fashion brand. <laughs> Yeah, I think there was a question earlier that said, who's coming into the space? And it's fashion, it's sports, it's beauty. The, the things that really do translate well. What's become more interesting is as brands like toilet paper and mouthwash and laundry detergent come to us or the gang, how do you translate into something that is fun with this audience that they want to engage with for toilet paper? That's a harder thing. There's a there's a there's a public bathroom simulator game that gets a lot of traffic, so there might be some it's actually very popular. Yeah, I was thinking about that as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's the yeah, that's the that's the ticket right there, Zach. So go pitch that and let us know what they say. The the games that are popular, and it, depending on your age, if you've been in Roblox, I mean, some of these games I cannot play because they are just not my type of game. There is a, a, a pressure wash simulator where you have to just wash things. It is massively popular, but it's because of that that we can do some of these fun things like you're talking about where you can almost have fun with the brand, but the brand has to be willing and able to take that, that risk and that jump backed by data, turned around and, and you know backed up afterwards by data, but Doing it in a way that these kids can have fun with your brand and not take yourself too seriously, but you have to be willing to do that. Cool. So um, there's just been so many great questions. Um, so we're just going to move on to the Q and A. Um, if you know, for those of you who wa are watching and you haven't had a chance to upvote or want to upvote more, there's been some new questions added. So um, now's a great time to jump in with any questions that you want to ask and to upvote um, the questions that you're most interested in in hearing about. So um, 
All right, I'm gonna sort of lump these sort of uh, top two questions together. Um, so the first one is about any concerns regarding US COPA compliance enforcement, uh, asking as YouTube slash Google was fined for non-compliance. And as a result, the ad revenue model has been dramatically worse for brand owners. It took a while for the FTC to move on this. And since there clearly is a ton of brand marketing towards kids, is a future FTC ruling and find something of which one should be wary. So that there's that, it, and there's also a related question about given Roblox newish policy not to advertise to kids under 13, can you talk about how you recommend reaching that audience uh, to your game? So kind of related in the kids space for sure. Um, yeah, um, what do you guys think? I have a ton, oh. but I, Marcus, do you wanna go first? No, I can go first. Um, first of all, it's um, Roblox is COPA compliant. And um, I, I think it's good that there is also um, attention not to start a market to uh, too young of an audience. I know Roblox is always making changes. <laughs> um, there was one change in the ad system actually that came out yesterday. <laughs> Uh, on Roblox, um, partly connected with this as well, what you're allowed to uh, advertise and how they view advertisement and everything. Uh, when we build experiences as well, we, we, we build branded worlds and not trying to sell something. And that's, that's kind of a distinct thing. We also say no to uh, certain clients that we believe is not a good fit for Roblox. We, we get quite a lot of questions from clients or potential clients, I would say, um, that might have an interest to work with us. So we, we, we have the fortunate situation that we actually can say no. <laughs> and uh, we do it on a regular basis. So we always try to work with First of all, clients that we believe is a good fit for the audience, uh, for the platform, that we can contribute something to the audience on the platform, that we can turn into a, a fun uh, kind of experience or additional to what's already there. And I, I also view it in a very, very similar way to when you do uh, product placements in movies, for example that in any movie that you have, you might drive a certain car or you uh, uh, might uh, do X or Y. If we would have uh, an additional text in uh, before entering a branded experience, for example, for it, it's very, very clear. When we create the branded experience, it's 100% clear that it's the brand that's behind it with the logo, with the information, uh, with the text that we say this is by, and every experience we build is also owned by the brand, so it's directly the brand that owns it. Uh, we don't own anything that we build for, for other brands. So I would say regulations I'm fully for. <laughs> and um, I really, really think it's good to uh, safeguard a younger audience. And um, I think it's good also that there are certain verticals that Roblox has also said absolute no to, that you're not allowed to put up. And I, I think it's going to be more and more changes moving up. So it's, it's a good question and a full understanding concern. I hope exactly. it was yeah. partly answer to the question in a way. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, Marcus got a lot of the points. I think the biggest one and the most important one is Roblox as a platform is COPA compliant. And so when we work across the platform, the data that we are seeing as partners that work across that platform, there is never PII. There's no way that we can retarget or target somebody or find their IP address and try to drop cookies. It is a very clean platform to work across. Our company has gone and got certified by the same company that certified them as COPA compliant, which is KidSafe. So we are KidSafe certified. All of the traditional advertising that we do on the platform is ad marked with um, with this is an ad. And then to Marx's point, there are certain things that can be gray area. And we usually tend to be on the conservative side. So we want people to fully understand when they are entering a branded experience or they're entering an integration that has a brand, 
that they know that this is an advertisement. It is a paid advertisement. I think it's similar to how social media had to deal with kind of influencers and everything else. It's just that new form of this. So we are very careful. We always try to push our brands to be careful and everything we do is COPA compliant. And I think uh, an example, um, so Nick Verse from Paramount, um, they have a full-on experience in Roblox. Uh, it has probably like the biggest, like this is an ad. I think it's both perhaps on the thumbnail um, as well as in the description. So it's like the, the um, you know, sort of disclaimer is quite, you know, noticeable. Um, you know, from what I've read about these sort of new developments from Roblox just recently announced, kind of allude to greater transparency. So to me, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in terms of while they like ban is like a heavy word, I think there's also maybe banning without disclosure, that type of um, sort of situation is potentially how that nets out versus like, oh no, Nickelodeon can't even be on the platform at all. I think there's, I think there's a sort of, sort of what this looks like is probably closer to what Nick is already doing, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they're a partner of ours with Nickverse and they are very, uh, their legal and standards is involved in everything that they do. And it's, we believe that they're doing everything right in the taking that next step to make sure that kids are safe, that the brands that they're partnering with are safe and that there is no risk involved for anybody here. Cool. Um, all right. We've got a couple more questions we'll, we'll get through and we'll go another maybe like eight minutes or so. Um, okay. What are the top three to five advertiser categories currently investing in marketing on Roblox? You kind of touched on that, Zach, maybe a little bit. Sports, yeah. fashion, beauty, um, entertainment. Yeah, I would, I would say, I would Music. fully agree upon that as well. Uh, you have um, um, absolutely fashion, as we touched upon. Um, sports is coming in quite a lot. Uh, there's a lot of interest from uh, sport companies around the world. Um, we are doing a few things that's going to come up this year uh, in that in that space. Uh, you have um, beauty. Of course, uh, a lot of beauty because you have on the Roblox, you have an audience that is almost 50 50 female male. Mm. Uh, I think it's 47 53 now. Uh, 53 is male, the last numbers. So you, you can target everyone, which is nice. And then music, there has been quite a lot of interest from time to time. But uh, I, I wouldn't say that's one of the one of the big ones. Uh, it's popping from time to time, and um, and I think also it depends on Roblox focus. Uh, mm. Sport, fashion, <laughs> uh, beauty has been uh, quite a clear focus from the Roblox side. <laughs> right, and they have Roblox has a brand partnerships team, and they have a lead in entertainment. They have a lead in music. They have a lead in sports. They have a lead in fashion. Um, they might have others, but those are, yeah, those are, those are the big ones. Um, and, and you touched a bit about, uh, upon, um, sort of that gender split, that demographics there. Uh, so you have a question around Roblox claims that they're seeing the biggest growth in ages 17 and 24. Um, what are you advising your clients and partners? Do you focus on under 16s or are you planning on older demographics as well? I, I can begin on this one um, and we it depends on the experience depends on the client and um, it depends on we, we also build our own experiences so it depends what we what we want to do sometimes we uh, we just target everyone <laughs> because we just want to build a, a fun experience that targets everyone uh, sometimes it might be a bit more mature it might be a bit more complexity or you might have to be able to uh, read and understand things or these kind of things. And then uh, we target an older audience. There is a possibility also to uh, uh, only allow players over a certain age. Uh, so you can even do that. We haven't really done that, but we can, but you can also, we write in 
the experience this one is for everyone or this one is for this age group or this one is for older uh, just to make it easier also it's quite a lot to have to do with how we build the experience as well uh, complexity i mentioned but also how the look and feel um, we are building sometimes and you're going to see that during the year as well uh, more high fidelity experiences um, more glossy <laughs> um, really good looking stuff and <laughs> that's going to target an older audience uh, because they are going to be used to it and that's kind of what they want to have and the younger ones they might want more to come in and just have fun for a while or socialize or whatever the older might want to have a, a start and a finish and an actual game loop uh, traditional so we are playing around with that as well both for clients as well for ourselves and um, so and that's gonna distinct the age as well so from our perspective it depends on the experience depends what we want to achieve um, and and then we uh, build thereafter <laughs> cool i'm gonna i'm just gonna move on to another question and i'll throw this one to you zach um, have you spoken to any interested brands that simply aren't a good fit for roblox so not including sort of budget concerns for sure uh, there's lots of them i think marcus kind of hit on them there's ones that roblox themselves will not allow um there are brands that may skirt some lines a good example is uh cfbai which is the food guidelines that roblox wants us to adhere to someone like I'll, I'll i'll just say mcdonald's as an example is somebody that some of their food items may not fit cfbai guidelines but mcdonald's as a whole has some food items that would fit that so McDonald's as a brand could come in advertising the brand, but not certain items. So it depends on how a brand wants to come in and what they're trying to do. So there are definitely some ones that just don't fit this audience. Um, beyond that, no. I mean, I think the thing that I love that Marcus said earlier, and I, my background is a lot of different things, but I was in esports for a little bit. And one of the things that I loved in esports was looking at brands like BMW that was going after an 18 year old audience. Yes, they could drive, but most of those people can't afford a BMW yet. But why are they there? Because this is an audience they wanna be a part of their life and growing up. And they want that, that, that moment that they can afford it, that they go straight to the BMW dealership instead of Lexus or Mercedes or whoever else. And I loved that. So if you are thinking about where your brand is going to go, 90% of these kids can't afford Gucci, I promise you. But eventually, they will walk into a Gucci store and go buy Gucci because Gucci supported them from the beginning on Roblox. So I don't think there are brands that aren't a good fit if you're thinking about who is your audience for the next 20 years, as long as you're allowed on Roblox. Um, I'm going to last question, and then we'll just do some kind of wrap up. Um, so the comment is, it's hard to break through uh, to the top of rated games. Uh, but what about sort of data slash experience and cost in retaining an audience? Are there many games, examples that can deliver sustainable long-term ongoing success? I'll yes. throw that to you, Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> there are. No, of, of course there are. It's uh, This is a really, really tough one. It's um, I'm going to be honest with everyone. It's, it's always tough to, there are millions of experiences <laughs> and uh, if you want to reach say top 200 of course it's going to be difficult i'm not going to say like oh it's a piece of cake because if i if i know how to do it every single time uh, <laughs> we, would, we would have every single one in the top 200 <laughs> mm. and i think there are a few things we always look at so i i love data so you mentioned data and um, I'm coming from a, a data, heavily data background and uh, working with uh, analytics, search engines, algorithms, these kind of things uh, were my <laughs> bread and butter back in the days, trying to figure out how Google works. And I tried to do the same here, try to understand, okay, what works and what doesn't, but not manipulate, but rather look into what's actually working and look into 
organic growth, uh, like men uh, Zach mentioned earlier, uh, playtime. Uh, what's your average playtime on the experience compared to other experiences within the same genre or as a whole? Um, what's the second day retention, seven day retention, 30 day retention? Keep full track of these numbers, make sure that they're moving in the right direction. Look into sprinkle with advertisement, but when you do it, you have to keep track of your retention numbers so you keep track of are people coming back to actually like it the like ratio as well the like ratio I would also say is not that important to bonus because there are some of the biggest games on the platform with a very very low like ratio but they are still some of the most popular games I think brands tend to look more at the like ratio <laughs> just because it reflects it's, them it's in a, a good way yeah it's an asymmetric to understand <laughs> yes <laughs> but but it doesn't really reflect how many players. So I would say when you buy advertisements or if you build something, keep close track of your data audience. And as I said before, speak with them, listen to them, see what they are saying and try to put in like detailed data and that analytics as well to see kind of where do they drop off? What do they do in how long? Where do I get if I jump into experience after four minutes and 33 seconds? What happens at that time? And then you might find out and then you tweak. <laughs> and I'll add one last thing because I know we're getting your time, but yep. think about this as, as social media. When, when social media first came out, brands weren't really, there was no one in house. They would maybe bring somebody in externally and they would curate their social media. Now, most brands have a social media team in-house that is putting up a post a day, looking at the performance of that post, and their post tomorrow is getting affected by what happened today. They're programming to the audience, and they're programming on a daily basis. Ideally, that is what this is. It's a social media platform that you should be programming on a daily basis, working with your partners, whether it's your developer of the gang or somebody like Super League, to figure out what did we do today, what worked, what didn't work, how are we going to affect the change of that tomorrow? And keep this as something that players are, your, their feedback is changing how you are interacting with them. That is what this platform is. And if you do that well, you'll see the consistent maintenance of players staying in and playing for a long time. But this is a platform you have to program for. You can't set it and forget it. You can't just build it and hope they will come. You have to program to what you're hearing from your audience. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Um, uh, if people were interested in learning more about your companies or sort of following you, what is a good way for them to, to do that? On, uh, on us, I think um, we have a website called the gang.io. Um, it's probably not the most updated website in the world, <laughs> uh, but um, you have all our uh, social and contact information there. I've seen there's a lot of questions also that we didn't have time to contact and also from fellow developers. Personally, I just want to mention that I love to speak to fellow developers. So uh, Mike, for example, if you contact us through our website and uh, they will put us in, uh, in touch with you. So then we can take it offline. <laughs> Great. Exactly. Yeah, and for me, uh, I, I won't give our website because I don't think it really tests the full value of what we do, but LinkedIn is probably the best way to get in touch with me. Um, reach out. I think there were some questions about how do you work with partners to bring brands in. We're always looking for new development partners, whether that is developers that are doing commercial stuff like the gang or have their own games and are looking to monetize those games with ads or integrations. Um, reach out, let me know if that's something you want to do. And then if you're a brand and want to explore the space, we can help you um, do a lot of it. And most of the times we're going to go over to the gang anyway for the development. So probably working with both of us when we're doing a bigger thing. Yeah, cool. we're, we're super close friends. So um... 
Awesome. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And for anybody who's interested in um, following along and, and getting more insights uh, into the space, uh, you can check out uh, my newsletter, uh, my website, you can sign up, uh, metaversemarcom.io. Uh, we have lots of content there um, and also are helping brands enter the space. So thanks everybody for joining. Uh, really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you.